Welcome to the Cornell Cooperative Extension Distance Learning Center Online. I'm going to cover the basic steps of logging into your online course and uh, show you how to post discussions and move around within the Learning Center to access the content that you need. So here we are. The web address is http colon slash slash moodle.cc.cornell.edu so if you visit that URL, you can log in there if you already have an account. If you haven't uh, created an account yet, you can create a new account by scrolling down the page slightly here to the login block here on the right hand side of the page and click the create new account link. So I'm going to click that right now and it will take us to a very basic form. You create your username here and a relatively secure password plop in your email address, confirm the email address, a little bit of information here, and click create my new account. What will happen then is Moodle will send an email to your address. On occasion, emails from Moodle are filtered to your trash or junk folder. So if you can't find the email in your inbox, check there. It should be there. Um, some email systems treat uh, automated messages automatically as spam. Uh, in this case, it is not spam. It's a valid email. It will have a link to click to confirm your account. So you confirm your account, and then you can come back to the home page here and log in. Now, there are a couple of ways you can log in. You can put your username and password up here, or you can go to the login block and put your username and password there. And I'm going to do that quickly and click the login button. And you can see that I've logged in, and here is my username. This is my test account. So if I click on my username here, you can see there's a drop-down menu that folds down. And I can go to my dashboard, which is a list of all the courses that I'm enrolled in. That's a really convenient way to easily access your online courses. Uh, and from here, you can just click the links. If you are enrolled in that course, you'll have access to it. Also here, I can update my profile. So if you want to add a uh, photograph or a picture of yourself, I can take a look at my grades, if anybody has sent me messages through the system, and I can set some preferences here. But for now, we're just going to go back home. So from the front page, I'm going to just sort of drop into one of my courses, and this is a test course that I've set up. Your course will obviously look a little more robust than this, but this will let us demonstrate just some of the basics that you'll need to know to successfully use uh, the Distance Learning Center. You'll notice that under topics, which may have different titles or names, uh, the content is organized and it's generally meant to be a unit taken together either weekly or related content within one topic. So topic one here you can see there's a little uh, camera icon here and that represents a, a Zoom meeting or webinar. This, is, this represents a forum, introduce yourself, so we'll click on that. And you can see there are no discussions here. This is just a blank test course. So I'm going to add a new discussion topic. I'm going to introduce myself. And so you type in a subject. And then you type in the body of your message. And of course, you'd want to introduce yourself with something relevant, some details about perhaps why you're participating in the course, what your interests are, uh, what you hope to gain, and things like that. And now I'm just going to click the scroll down and click the post to forum button. And it tells me that I have 30 minutes to edit that if I want to make any changes. So if you create a post and you decide you'd like to go back and make a few changes to it, you have half an hour to come back in and edit it. But we're just going to take a look at it here and click on the discussion. Hello, it's Paul. And you can see there's my rather non-extensive message. Now, if I'm looking at somebody else's introduction, I'd like to reply to that. I click the Reply button. You can see also that I have the ability to edit here. Now, that's going to go away in half an hour, but because I generated the uh, discussion post, I can still edit it. So if I want to go in and add a few more details, uh, you can just add here. And, and it will let you know if you're not doing things correctly. Save the changes there and it was updated. So we just go back and you can see that my changes have been updated here. 
Now, if I were looking at another Paul's uh, hello post, I could reply to that. I'd click reply. And you could say whatever you'd like here. And so you post that. And you can see now that we have a reply to my initial forum post. So that's how forums work. If you've used Facebook or anything like that, you're probably pretty used to entering text online. Uh, Moodle is pretty much a standard system. and It has an embedded editor that looks like a lot of things you've seen if you, again, use Facebook or you create a blog or anything like that. Um, the other thing I'd like to quickly show you is you also have icons in your course that look like this, the little hand holding a page. That represents an assignment, and this is a, an upload assignment, so I'm going to click on that. And it's going to take me to the assignment page. And you can see here it is, the assignment is very basic, it's upload a file. This is not a real course, so this, your assignments are going to be slightly different than that, but I just wanted to show you the process, so I'm going to add a submission. I'm submitting my assignment now, so I click that button, and it takes me here. And I could drag and drop, but I can also click on that little drag and drop box, and it opens up an upload file picker. So again, I'm going to browse for an attachment. And I'm going to go in here and just grab a quick file. And I don't have to rename it. I want it to, I can keep the name. I'm going to click upload this file. And then I want to save my changes. So I save that file. And the system then slots it into your required assignment. And you can see that you submitted it for grading. It hasn't been graded yet. Uh, once you, your instructor has taken a look at your assignment, if it's a graded assignment, you'll be able to receive the grade there. Uh, you can also see that I can navigate back up to the top level of, of this particular course, either by using the breadcrumbs up top here, or on my navigation on the left-hand side, I can click the, the course title, and it will take me back to the front page. You can also see that if I want to know what my grades are, I have easy access to grades here in the right-hand block called Administration. So if I click on that, I can see that I've uploaded an assignment, but it has no grade yet. So we'll just sort of let that sit because uh, this is not real by any stretch. But when you have a grade, you can use it. You can check easily there. If I want to return home to the very front page of the, the Distance Learning Center, I can click here. I can click here. Either way, it's going to take me back. And you can see here I am with my courses. And this was the course we were just in. So if you have multiple courses, you can easily access them this way. Uh, there's more navigation here, which will take you to your course. And again, you can go to your profile. And in your profile, you can see it also lists the courses that you have here. If you want to quickly get to my forum discussions, I can uh, click links here on my profile, and that will take me immediately to any post that I have. And from there, I can just click right into it. So it's a very fast and easy way to do that if you want to navigate using your profile, uh, depending, again, on how many courses you have going on. Again, back to the home. I can click here. And we're back here. That's the basics of logging into and then quickly navigating uh, and using some of the functionality of the system. There will be other activities that you may find in your course, and most of them follow a pretty standard pattern of behavior. Uh, the interfaces, the, the way you add content, look very similar. Um, so if you can post a discussion forum and upload an assignment, you're in pretty good shape. Um, you won't be asked to do anything that's too far beyond the realm of, of things that you're comfortable with. If you do need help, you can see there's a link here to contact the CCE Help Desk. If you click that link, it will open up an email message in your email system, whatever particular system you use. You can let us know what your issue is, and we'll get back to you and try to resolve that issue. Uh, some issues are resolved here centrally on campus. Some issues will be forwarded to your instructor for uh, further information. But that is the quickest way to get help if you're having problems. 
Um, just a quick note about browsers. Uh, prior to the release of Microsoft Edge, which has replaced Internet Explorer, uh, we did not recommend folks use Internet Explorer with Moodle because there was some functionality differences between the way it wanted to work and the way other browsers worked. As of Windows 10, if you're running Windows 10 and you, you have Microsoft Edge, functionality is equivalent to any other browser. If you are running an older version of the Windows operating system, I would recommend that you use either Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox as your browser. Um, you can use Internet Explorer, it just will function a little bit oddly at moments, which can be very frustrating. So in order to avoid that frustration and, and any challenges that might present, use either Edge, uh, recommended Firefox, or Chrome. Um, if you're coming in from a Macintosh, this system has been tested on Safari and Chrome on, on a Macintosh. It's fully functional with those and compatible with those. You can also access the course using tablets or mobile phones. If you access the chorus with a Moodle app, and there is uh, an app called Moodle Mobile, which is available for Android and uh, iPhones, some of the functionality is reduced, but you can still do things like post discussions and submit assignments, view what's going on in the course. So with a mobile device, you will have functionality. If you're using the mobile app, you will have somewhat reduced functionality, but still be able to access some of the fundamental things you need to do. So, I didn't want to take a lot of time this, in this video, but I just did want to give you a quick overview of how to navigate. When you're done, if you want to log out, you can just click the Log Out button at the bottom of this drop-down, and that will take you back. And now I'm not logged in. And again, to log in, I can go here. I can hit the Login block here. If for some reason you're having problems right out of the gate. The link to the help desk is right here and you can easily click that and just shoot us a message. We'll get back to you and resolve your issue as quickly as we can. Thank you very much.